Hi, everybody. We are back with our guest, Melissa from Hospice and Palliative Care, and she is going to be talking with us about a new program that they have. Thank you for joining us, Melissa. Yes, thank you for having me. I think this is fabulous, you know, a great way to get information out there to um, our seniors that live in the community. So um, my name is Melissa. I do work for Hospice and Palliative Care, but I'm here today to talk about our new program. Um, it's been out for about two years now. It's called AIM, um, which stands for Advanced Illness Management, which is a palliative care program. So hospice is a palliative care program, but that program is for patients that um, are expected to have a life expectancy of six months or less. And the whole goal with palliative is to help um, manage um, symptoms relating to an illness and pain management. So AIM program is a palliative care program as well, but our goal is to focus on patients that have chronic diagnosis or chronic condition. So um, with our program, if a patient has COPD, um, congestive heart failure, um, really any type of chronic diagnosis that they need a nurse practitioner to go into their home to see them, to help address those needs. Um, they might be having side effects from treatment because that's the other beauty is on our AIM program, our patients can still be seeking treatment. They can still be going um, uh, seeking dialysis or seeking chemotherapy. So they're just not there yet for that hospice level of care, but yet they need somebody to come into the home to say, you know, if you're having this side effect, it could be from this, or if you're experiencing this, let's try this holistic approach. Um, our nurse practitioner goes into the patient's home typically every 30 days, but we do have some patients that might not need every month. Maybe they need her to come every two months, um, which is fine. Um, we have um, a very small team. So we have two nurse practitioners. We have one full-time, one part-time. And then we have myself, I'm the social worker. And then we do have a palliative RN. So um, we just try to help uh, find different resources out there in the community for our patients too. So a lot of times, um, if you don't have a family member that's in the healthcare field, or if you've never navigated the healthcare field, it could be very scary. Where do I go to get medical equipment? How do I get the script? I can't get a hold of the doctor. So we try as a team to sort of alleviate those pressures off of our patients and just try to help guide them and provide um, support for that. Um, we don't have any physical hands-on care yet. Maybe that might be coming down the road, but um, we can be in um, a lot of times with hospice. You, It's just hospice and not um, usually a home care agency at the same time, but for our patients, they can be um, on board with like VNA or Nascentia or Acacia Home Care. We can be in at the same time, which is really nice because a lot of times those services come to an end, but our services can still continue. So there's no limit for our service. So um, pay, we've had patients that have been on with us right along. And then what's nice is that if the time comes for that patient to need a higher level of care, our nurse practitioner can go in, meet with the patient, meet with the family, gather whoever's important to have that conversation and talk about what's the next level. What does that look like? Is that possibly going on to hospice or is it something else moving in with a loved one? You know, um, but she can start having those conversations. A lot of times we get patients that come on with us that don't have any advanced care planning in place. So they don't have a healthcare proxy. They don't have a power of attorney. They don't know who to go to start that process. They don't have, um, they haven't addressed um, a MOLST, which is medical orders of life sustaining treatment. So that determines like DNR, DNI, what their wishes are. Um, some of the families never even have had that discussion and don't know what their loved one's wishes are. So it's nice to be able to have the nurse practitioner go into the comfort of their own home and take the time not feeling like they're rushed to be able to have that serious conversation um, 
we also do telehealth program, which is really nice. So um, they tailor the telehealth program depending on the patient's diagnosis. So um, they can monitor uh, blood pressure, oxygen level, weight. And so it's nice because the patients feel like they're connected with um, a clinical staff that's checking in on them every day. Although with COVID-19, we pretty much have been checking in regardless because um, with all that, but we're still here. We're still going out and seeing patients on the hospice end and on the AIM end. That really hasn't um, stopped us. Um, although we've been doing a lot more um, telehealth on the AIM end based on patients' um, wishes. But um, anybody can make a referral. So a lot of times people think it has to come from the medical doctor, which is good because then that medical doctor knows what your wishes are and kind of is brought in on that um, goal. But anybody can make a referral. It can come from the patient. It can come from a healthcare proxy, a family member. The only thing I would say when it's coming from a family member is that to make sure that they've had that conversation with the patient, that this is what we're doing. Um, but it also can come from a specialist, a doctor, whoever. Um, it's really easy to make a referral. So um, we have a beautiful website. It's hospicecareinc.org. Has a lot of great information on our website um, in regards to hospice, but also um, on our palliative care program. But if you go onto the website, up on the top, you'll see referrals. If you click on that, it'll bring a drop down box and you'll see AIM and you can submit a referral right online. It'll just ask for basic information like first, last name, date of birth, address. Um, it'll ask some basic information. And then what's nice, it comes right to the AIM team, including the CEO. And then the only thing that can kind of delay a visit is trying to get the records from the doctor because of um, HIPAA, um, Sometimes they have to have families sign like a waiver, but other than that, it's very easy to um, make the referral. If anybody has any questions, they can always call to um, our phone number is 315-735-6487. Um, my, my extension is 1026. Feel free to give me a call. I'd be happy to walk anybody through the process. Um, it's a great program. Uh, I should talk about the insurance piece of it because that's probably why everybody wants to know. <laughs> so um, Medicare Part B pays for the visit typically at 80%. Um, if a patient has a secondary insurance, sometimes that secondary insurance will pick up the 20%. Um, but some of the private insurances or the Medicare managed plans, we always have to run the benefit just because the idea of our program is so new to New York State um, that some, but it's getting better. The insurance companies are getting a lot better and they're realizing the need for this because our whole goal is really to prevent that rehospitalization for the patient. Um, we can go into about just about any environment to provide um, care. The only place that we really we can't is nursing homes, but really pretty much any place else, um, assisted living facilities, independent senior care. Um, I go out a lot and promote our program, which is really good. Um, if anybody wants any information, I'd be happy to mail them you know, additional information on the program. Okay, that's great. And I will put your contact information um, yeah. right with the Facebook video so that people can, can yeah. see it. Um, now, if somebody is self-referring or their doctor has referred them, but yeah. they either don't have access to the internet or they're not comfortable with it, can yeah. they fill that referral form out? Do you have a physical copy or could they do it over the phone? Oh, absolutely. They could do it right over the phone. They can um, call me right over the phone and I could take all of the information. We do have referral forms in the office. So I once had a patient whose doctor contacted us and wanted me to fax her information about the program, um, also um, fax her our referral form, which I'll be more than happy to do that too. Or if 
um, somebody wants me to mail it to them personally, and then they can bring it to their doctor, which I think is great that they're having that discussion with the doctor, but I'll be more than happy to take the referral over the phone too. That's wonderful. Yeah. It's good to know. Yeah. Well, is there anything else we should know about hospice or this program? I'm trying to think. So I know a lot of um, people right now um, have been going through a really hard time with COVID-19. A lot of places are shut down, um, experiencing social distancing. We have a lot of great information on our website um, about um, COVID-19, but also bereavement support. And, you know, um, sometimes, uh, you know, people who are experiencing a loss, especially now really to COVID-19, they can always reach out to our program and they can, um, our bereavement staff can help connect them to different resources, materials that are out there. Even if somebody doesn't want to talk to another person, there's so many great um, reading materials, websites, um, different information on our website. So I always like to stress that, especially with everything that's going on right now. That's a, that is a great resource. We will yeah. share that on our Facebook. Trying to, I, th I think that's really it. You know, we're here to help um, our patients just, especially now during COVID-19, there's a lot of anxiety. You already are dealing with anxiety relating to your chronic condition, but now your anxiety is even more heightened because of COVID-19. So we're just here to be an extra layer of support. Um, oh, that's the other thing that I failed to mention is that the patients, they still continue to keep their primary care doctor and our specialist. We're just kind of like that extra layer of support for them. Okay, that's great to know. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. This was wonderful information. Sure, anytime I can talk about our program.